Father, we just thank you tonight. We ask, Father, that you would give us an ear to hear. Father, uh, help your people, Father. They work hard all week and, and just stir them up spiritually tonight, Father, that they can receive without wavering. And Lord, we thank you so much for what you're about to do and start in many people's lives. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn to someone right now and say, I'm expecting high expectations. Not low, high. Now tonight, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you that low expectations will not produce spiritual growth in your life. There has to be a high expectation for faith to grow, for the fruit of the Spirit to grow, for your prayer life to grow. There has to be high expectations. And this is something that I believe that in America we have a, what I call a sleeping church. It's a church, not here, but in many places where there isn't that high expectation when one believes to receive the things that God has for them. And because of that, you don't see the growth level that you should see in people's lives personally. And uh, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, how many are familiar with Philippians 4.19? My God shall meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That was, that was some of my favorite verses when I first came to the Lord. But religion teaches it in a lukewarm way. Maybe you've heard it something like this. Where someone says, yep, yeah, that verse says that God will meet all your need, basic needs. And that's how it was projected. And they might say, well, God may not want you to have that kind of car. He just wants you to have some transportation. Or he may not want you to have that a nicer house. He wants you to have this. And so it was always downplayed to the very minimum that you would need to exist in your life. But I want you to remember the, the Greek word for need depends on the position that it's put in. For example, if you have a billion dollar business like Microsoft, they have a million dollar budget that's big just to be able to stay in business. So if something's big, the needs are bigger than if something is small, the needs are smaller. Plus, the verse says this, it says, according to the riches of his glory. Now, when it's according to not your resources, but according to God's resources, and he is the most wealthy individual that exists, can you say amen? The return then changes. You know, if you take a billionaire and he has a daughter that's having a birthday, he may spend $40,000, $50,000 shooting off fireworks for her birthday. He may spend $100,000 bringing in some celebrity that is some famous singer for her because it's according to his riches, not according to ours. So the verse is not telling us to have low expectations. It's telling us to have high expectations. I believe that when you got saved, salvation not only forgive you of your sins, but God wants us to have a very high expectation of what God will do through the salvation that Jesus provided for us in our family, in our careers, in our country, and everything else. Amen? Amen. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to give you an in-depth teaching on the blessing. As you look at the in-depth teaching on the blessing, you're going to understand what is reasonable to expect God to do in your life. And I'm not talking about just hoping things will get better. I'm talking about an expectation that comes from the certainty of something that you've believed in faith for. Are you ready for it tonight, everybody? All right, so look here in Galatians chapter 3, and we'll use this as our text. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now go back to verse 5 again. I want you to look at this. He, Paul's talking about the church that fell back under the law. And he said, listen, when you, when you first met Jesus, the Spirit was giving you miracles in your life that were supplied by the Spirit. 
Now, usually when we think of miracles, we think of people getting out of wheelchairs. We think of blind eyes opening. We think of incurable diseases. We think of many things like that, like uh, Chris, who is our manager here at the church, does maintenance. Uh, He came to church and he had liver failure and kidney failure. And he had been in the hospital for six months and they released him and put him under hospice, but he didn't know what hospice was. He thought it was a good thing. He was going home, but they didn't realize hospice means you're dying. There's no cure for it. And he came, heard the message here, began to envision the healing. Anyway, short, long story short, he got healed. Amen? Amen? And so that's kind of the miracles that we associate with, but you're limiting what you're expecting when you do that. Remember the Old Testament, uh, the miracle of the woman who had the cruise of oil? All she had in the house was that. She had this big debt that they were coming to take her boys, went to the prophet, and the prophet took that cruise of oil and multiplied it, caused it to increase as she filled up all those vessels, paid off her debt, and then also had enough money for a healthy retirement for her. That's supernatural. That's a miracle. Amen? Or how about when Jesus turned or fed the 5,000, which is, it only records men, which means there were women and children as well. So there's probably 15,000, 20,000 people. And with five loaves and two, uh, or five f- fishes and two loaves, he fed that great multitude. That's, that's a miracle, amen? Or how about this one? This is one of my favorite. Isaac, the son of Abraham. You remember the story where God told him, I want you to sow a seed in in this land. The problem was it was a drought. Everybody was suffering financially. Everyone was suffering uh, because there was no rain. And God told him to sow the seed. He sowed seed in the land there. And without water, the seeds germinated. And it says that he received a hundredfold, which the average crop would be about 12-fold. Supernatural. Supernatural increase. In other words, that was the day that Isaac became as rich as his father Abraham was. Say amen, everybody. So sometimes when we think of the miracles, we only think of healing when God does miracles to protect us, to look after us. Uh, to prevent evil in our lives from overtaking us. And so I want you to keep that in mind because we're, we're, we're building on this idea of blessing. What can the blessing, what can we expect the blessing to do in our lives? Now go back to the verse now. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith of the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gen- Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham before saying in you all the nations shall be blessed now what I want you to see is simply this the blessing that was given to Abraham is the same blessing that's given to us say it with me it's the same blessing because the Messiah would come through the seed of Abraham amen now there's power in this in fact it explains some verses when you're studying, for instance, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it talks about how the gospel is preached to them as well as to us. What gospel? It's about the blessing of Abraham in the Old Testament as well as the blessing of Abraham in the New Testament. And I think sometimes we miss it. When, when you see in Galatians here, this whole chapter is building up to this truth that the blessing of Abraham has been given not just to the Jews but to the Gentiles now you say who's a Gentile you you're a Gentile in other words the gospel in fact write this down in Romans chapter 11 verse 11 through 12 it says this it says that the riches of the Jews have been given over to the Gentiles us because of their unbelief in other words God worked through the nation of Israel for many 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 years but they rejected Christ so he took the blessing 
and transport it over to everyone else from every other culture. And that's what this chapter is talking about. Now look, at, look down in verse 13. Christ has, say has, redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, as it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Uh, yeah, can you give me the next couple verses, please? If you could. Anyway, he goes on and he talks about how that it, this happened in order that we might receive the blessing of Abraham and we might receive the Holy Spirit. Say amen, there it is. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we, now that's us, say, say that's me. You're gonna cooperate tonight? <laughs> say that's me. that's me. All right. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the detailed description of some of the blessings, not all of them, of Abraham. Here he's generalizing and he's saying that we receive the blessing, plural or singular. Deuteronomy 28, the Holy Spirit reveals the detail of that blessing. And you'll understand why America's blessed after you see this. So look over in Deuteronomy 28. And I'm going to read you this text here, and you'll see this. It says, Now it shall come to pass that if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Now notice he said, telling Israel, I'm going to make you the greatest nation of all the nations in the world. Now, did that ever happen? No, it never happened. That's because the Old Testament, I just follow me here, they were under the law. In other words, they thought, if I do everything God says, the blessings of Abraham will come on me. The problem is no one can. No one is good enough. So what God did to compensate for it, he offered up this systematic system of offering up animal sacrifices, which pointed to Jesus he would be the final sacrifice. And they would put their faith in that sacrifice and God would cover their sins. And they received a similar measure of blessings because of that. It wasn't because they kept the law. It was because of the sacrifices that they did. Abraham was justified not because he did something, but because he believed something just like we are. Amen? But here's the part that's powerful. People oftentimes we'll read that text and they'll go, well, God's talking about Israel. He's not talking about the church. That's not right. He's talking about the church as well as Israel. In fact, let me give you two proof or, or two references. Colossians 2.12, we talked about this last week, that we were aliens of the commonwealth of Israel. That's the blessing that came on that nation. And let me ask you this question. What nation in the world is the greatest of all the nations? America. Why? Because it was founded on Christianity. Gentiles that believed on Christ put together our constitution and everything else. And that's why America is the greatest nation on this earth. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem is the devil has tried to rob us of a Christian nation and made it a secular nation. That's why we're having all these problems. But the end story is the church is going to rise up. Come on, say amen. There is no political party that's going to whip us. There is, come on, there's no political party that's going to defeat the church because the church is more powerful. Amen? But let's go around on, on Deuteronomy here, verse 2. He says, And all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, I like that. In other words, he's saying that the blessings will chase after you. You won't have to chase after them. If we chase after Jesus, the blessings will chase after us. In other words, we don't have to chase after wealth. Wealth will chase after you. You don't have to chase after healing in this respect where you just go from doctor to doctor to doctor and all that kind of stuff, even though there's nothing wrong with that. What we need to do is believe in faith 
what Jesus provides for us on the cross, himself took up our infirmities and bore our sickness. And as we stand in faith, uh, those things that we need will be attracted to us and healing and all that stuff can be provided for you. And everybody got excited, amen? amen. So it's, it's different than the world. The world seeks after to be rich. The Christian, riches follow the Christian that's seeking after Jesus. So all we gotta do is seek after Jesus. Go to him, believe what his word said, believe what he did on the cross, and all those things will be given to you that you need in life. Amen? That doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean there isn't going to be trials, and it doesn't mean there's not going to be disappointments. But if you stand in faith, the blessing will show up. I'll give you an example. I'm really hard-nosed about healing in the church. And the reason why I'm hard-nosed is because you can't get healed unless, there's the, unless you're sure it's God's will. Just like I'm hard-nosed that God wants to save everyone. He doesn't want to just save some people. He wants to save everyone. And if you think there's just a few people he wants to save, you know, like these cults, 144,000, come on, give me a break. You want to go to heaven and there'll be no one up there? Uh, hey, where is everybody? Uh, it's going to be packed. Amen. So... I'll give you an example. This happened years ago as Joyce and I were starting ministry and because it shows you how the blessings overtake you and come upon you. I, we weren't, we didn't have much money. The church is really small. And I had bought a Dashiell diesel uh, station wagon. Beautiful car. Loved the car. And, but the problem was for a year, my wife had a headache that wouldn't go away for a whole year. And at the end of that year, we were planning on going on vacation, but we didn't have any money. And a couple in the church says, we want to pay for you to go to Disneyland with your kids. So they paid for the whole thing. And we went there, and we noticed my wife did not have a headache any longer. And the Lord revealed to us it's because of the Dasher diesel. The diesel was bothering her, and so I got rid of the station wagon, no more headaches. But notice, it, it was something that chased after us. We didn't chase after it. I mean, here, here's the thing. When you do God's will, God's will follows after you. The blessings follow after you. Now, of course, we were standing in faith for healing, but it was something so simple. And now if we go out on a boat that's diesel or whatever, it doesn't bother her too much. It just bothered her if she was exposed to diesel all the time. And when you got kids, you know, when, you know what I'm talking about, ladies. When you got kids, all you are is a taxi cab driver. Pretty one, but that's all you are. You're just going from one event to the next event, so you're in the car all the time. God wants you to know that his blessings will chase after you. Opportunities will chase after you. Divine healing will chase after you. If you're seeking Christ, if you're believing in faith what Christ has offered, things will chase after you. They'll chase after you. When I was having my voice issues, all of a sudden, uh, Someone told me about a woman who was an opera singer who had a similar problem, who is a Christian, and I called her up, and she was down in New Jersey. And she turned everything right around. She said, the Lord told me how to do this. This is what you need to do. I started practicing it, and I got deliverance. See, you see what I'm saying? God's not leaving us there to fend for ourselves. Just keep seeking God with all your heart. Now, here, here's the beautiful thing. The blessing will bless you in everything. Not just in some things, everything. Look at the verse. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Some people get the idea that, well, I'll never be blessed being married to this person. No, the blessing works even if you're married to the uncle of the antichrist the blessing will still work come on say amen it's true 
I've seen people in terrible situations, but the blessings on them still works in that negative situation. Or how about this one? I'll never be blessed on this job because this isn't the kind of job that I want. The blessing will work on whatever job you got. Now, it doesn't mean that you'll be stuck with it the rest of your life, but it means the blessing will work, which means God will empower you to prosper in whatever area that you're working in. Now, look at verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds. Make a note of that, increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Now, he's ministering directly to farmers here, but in the, if you look at the old King James Version there, when it talks about the increase of your herds, or my herds, it's translated, my herds, he's talking about animals in this case, that were used to increase a person's uh, business, like if they were a farmer. The more cows you have, the more dairy you can sell to the villages and the cities and so forth. So this blessing will give you as much as you need to expand your business or the blessings in your life that you need. You need a Mac computer, it's in there. Say amen. You need a, a work truck, it's in there. You got to see it because when you believe in faith for something, you have to believe that it's offered, number one, that it belongs to you, and then you receive it, and then you are in this state of high expectation for it to show up. And when it shows up, it'll bless you. Now, watch this Blessed shall be your basket and your needling bowl. In other words, God is going to keep you, give you surplus at home. Look at the next verse. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you, you be when you go out. In other words, you're going to be blessed when you're in the traffic and when you're out of the traffic. You're going to be blessed on Friday when you're, you're done with your work and you've got the weekend to look forward, and you'll be blessed on Monday when you go to work. You say, is the blessing this powerful? Yes, 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 yes. I, when, before I went into ministry, the Lord was constantly blessing me on the secular job that I was in. Now, here's some young guy, doesn't know anything in carpentry work, working a commercial carpenter. I was just an apprentice. My, my, I remember my boss, he did this to me. He said, Jack, I want you to do this. I want you to show up at this job shack or this job site. They were doing all the, the groundwork and all that stuff. And what I want you to do all day long is count the trucks that come in with the loads of dirt. And I'm thinking, boy, he trusts me. I'm getting paid a small fortune to sit in a truck all day, listen to my radio, and write down, oh, there's one truck, there's another truck, there's a truck. And he kept me working all during the time that people are getting laid off. He kept me working. It's just a blessing. Now, did, is that what I was going to do all my life? No, but I was still blessed. I was still blessed. I was still blessed. I never, I never got hurt. And I remember one time when I was in a job, job and, and they put a big pile of uh, plywood on top because they had hired some scabs, and that means non-union. And they put it on top, and it went through each floor. Bam, 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 and missed me. Say amen. amen. That doesn't mean if you got hurt, there's something wrong with you. I'm just saying that the blessing will work with you wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever season you are in your life, the blessing is there, and you got to expect favor. you got to expect favor, and when you do that, it'll be a great thing. Now, look at, uh, put the verse back up if you would. Thank you. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you, to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. James 4, 7 says what? Resist the devil and he will flee. Seven ways. Seven ways. Seven ways. Seven ways. When I was working in construction, I was on fire for God. Everybody knew I was on fire for God. 
And I had this one foreman that hated my guts. I, he would cuss me out and he would yell at me. It got so bad I had to go into one of the little outhouses and go in there and pray, Lord, please help me from killing him. Please help me, Lord Jesus. And I didn't kill him, but I remember it was a, it was a weeknight. I'd worked all day, and they were behind schedule and said, everybody's working until 10 o'clock tonight. I said, I, I can't. I've committed to a Bible study. He says, if you leave tonight, you're fired. And I remember I said, I hate to do this, but I, I made a commitment. I'm going. I left. So all, all the way home, I'm, I'm broken before God because we need money. We, are, we need some money. I feel so bad about it. I said, Lord, but I just, I can't break that commitment, but I, I need the job too. You need to intervene. You need to help me with this. The next day, I went back to the, to the job site because he's not the one that does the firing. The superintendent fired him and kept me on. Say amen. Now, I'm not trying to get everybody to go, man, where's God with me? I'm just telling you that the blessing will work in the craziest spots. It's God empowers those blessings to operate within you, but you've got to be expecting favor. You've got to be expecting. Look at this next part. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? How many house, storehouses? Anthony, I'm talking to you. How, how many? Not just one, right? There's several. Wasn't that more than one? That means that God wants you to be able to, he wants you to have surplus in many different accounts. Not just enough to pay the rent, but the one for the emergency fund, the one for your vacation, the one for your retirement, the one for your wife's birthday, the one that my wife did for my grandkids, taking them all, eight of them, to Disneyland, which, oh, Lord Jesus. And then the one you need to marry your kids off with. Boy, I tell you. But it says that God will do that. And it says, and in all which you have set your hand, and he will bless you in the land, or in Kent, which the Lord your God has given you. Amen. Now we can go on, but he talks about us being the head and on the tail, above and up beneath. He wants to bless you to a place you don't have to borrow, you can lend and I believe that the blessing will work if you believe in faith in that blessing. But you have to receive it, and if you do, then God will begin to move it in your life in a great way. You say, well, Pastor, I thought Christianity was all about the life to come. That's a mistake. It isn't. It's about heaven blessing this earth. In fact, people go, well, I can hardly wait till I get to heaven. Well, you're only going to be up there a little while. You know why? Because the Bible says at the end of the age, after God restores creation, heaven will come down from above and land back on this planet. In other words, uh, there's going to be a restoration of all creation, and heaven is going to be on the earth as we see it right now. I don't know. That's pretty exciting. Isn't that exciting? You'll find that in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, I believe it is. Look at this verse, Psalms 115, verse 16. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. In other words, God created creation so that we could enjoy it with his blessing. We could enjoy it with his blessing on our families, on the earth itself. Amen? Amen. And I do believe that we should take care of the earth. But the point is, the blessing is here. In fact, let me show you another verse, Romans 4, 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the, where? The world was not to Abraham and to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. We're the heir of what? The world, the world, the world the world praise God for heaven praise God for streets of gold 
Praise God for that place that has no sickness and disease, has no lack and so forth. But when it's all over, that place is going to be here. I love the verse that says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Man, that's good preaching. So the blessing then will create in your life the favor of God, opportunities, blessings. But always remember this. There's a difference between hoping things will be good and having a faith expectation. You may hope it works out and it may never work out. But when you believe in faith, according to the word of God, what the word says, when you do that, what happens then at that particular point is there is a certainty of expectation that is going to happen in your life because you're praying and believing for something that God has blessed us in Christ Jesus to have. All the blessings are in Jesus. You got Jesus, you got it all. And it'll make a significant excuse me, a difference in your life and bless you in a great way. Uh, let me show it to you from this standpoint. You remember the story about Peter and John. They were going over to the temple to, to pray and there was a man there who was crippled from birth and no one had ever been healed, crippled from birth. This man was was there and he was asking for alms and you remember the text it said that Peter and John fixed their eyes on this man and it says that he was expecting to receive this wasn't a hopeful expectation it was I know they're going to give me something it came from the certainty of their faith as soon as they turned he knew I'm getting something I don't know what I'm getting something and Peter says, he'll go and have we none, but what we do have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, grabbed him, picked him up, power of God, hit him, and he leaped and jumped, and they went into the temple. Amen? Amen. But the point that I want you to see is that there, there was an expectation, a certainty that something was going to happen. When you're dealing with the things of God, there's a certainty that God's going to hear you. There's a certainty that God is going to change your family. There's a certainty that God's going to give you equipment. There's certain that God's going to give you a way out. It's certain, there's a certainty, and you don't know when it's going to happen, but you know it's going to happen. Amen. And, and that's what I'm talking about tonight when I say a high expectation. Instead of, well, you know, maybe I didn't need that in my life and maybe I can get by with less and whatever. Sure, you can get by with less. But God wants your faith to grow and it won't grow with low expectations. You gotta have high expectations. You gotta stretch your faith every time. Believe for something bigger and better than you've ever seen before. Yes. Hallelujah. And when you do that, you begin to grow in a great way in your life. And there is what I call... A supernatural attraction that happens when you obey the voice of the Lord. You remember when Peter was, or Jesus was preaching and the crowd was so big that he needed a stage platform, so he asked Peter, can I get in your boat and just put it out a little ways and I'll preach off that. And they had fished all night and caught nothing. You know the story. And in the story, once Jesus had done preaching, he told Peter, and they'd fished all night, he said, I want you to let down your nets and go fishing again. Now, obviously, you don't fish during the day. You fish at night, and the fish can't see the nets, and you don't fish in the shallows, and that's what he asked them to do. But here's what happened. Peter had a little bit of faith, not a lot of faith, because he only sent out one boat when he said nets. Soon as he went out, every fish in that lake was coming to get in those nets. Every fish was coming to get it. They were attracted to that faith because when you believe what God tells you and you act on it, if the, all the blessings start getting attracted to you. They just start coming in. Hallelujah. I, maybe the fish were doing something else. No, we got to we get the blessing. Got to get the blessing. Got to get the blessing. And here's the thing about the word of the Lord. 
when God speaks directly to you if you, do, if you obey him the blessing will attract what you need but this word is God's word too the difference is when God speaks to you and he's spoken to me many times over different things and I obey it I get blessed but this word right here when I read it and I obey it in faith it attracts the blessing when I read it whatever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them and I apply my faith to that verse it draws in the blessing too it rearranges the petition it come on it begins to minister to you God begins to visit you in the middle of the night God begins to encourage you when you do that and it doesn't matter what part of the word it is as long as you're obeying it it's going to bring that to pass so I love the fact that it is attracting the blessing your faith attracts the blessing but every one of us has been lied to I'll be honest with you all been lied to we've been lied to by the devil that the words that you say don't matter that much it's not that big a deal what you say they're kind of empty whatever and we have given way to his playbook it doesn't really matter what I say when the, Jesus says the words that I speak are spirit and life there is life in the words that you say or there is death in the words you say that's why people outside of the church end up going to therapy and psychologists when people hurt them they've gone through a divorce why those words that were spoken in that bad relationship are killing them only in Christ can we be forgiven of our sins and be able to get over what someone said to us and hurt us and robbed us and was unfaithful and all the things that go along with dysfunctional families and divorce and all that stuff only in Christ you can handle it hallelujah so remember then the word says what you say will come to pass and it'll either produce life or death so don't believe the lie of the devil that it doesn't matter what you say it does and whatever trial that you're in right now be expecting what God's word says to happen in your life I want you to stand to your feet right now and I'll begin to wind this down you remember the story of Joseph Joseph had a dream that he would be over everybody but how many know just because you get a word from the Lord does not mean you're going to be trial free it usually means you're going to be in a trial and in the story his brothers got so jealous of him when he started sharing the dream that they, they, they were thinking about killing him but they didn't and they threw him into a pit and he was sold into slavery but Joseph continued to believe in the vision the vision that he would be over people and what happened at Potiphar's house he became the head servant it would be like being the head servant over a multi-millionaire he had authority and power in that position but God rose him up in that situation and you remember the story Potiphar's wife had the hots for him he resisted she lied to her husband he was then thrown into the to the king's prison and even in prison because he had that vision God promoted him to be the head servant over the prison and then finally there was a cupbearer of the king that was in prison for whatever reason and he asked if Joseph would interpret his dream and he said I would if you if you put in a word for me with the Pharaoh of course he forgot for two years and then remembered he spoke to the Pharaoh the most important person on the planet at that time and the Pharaoh brought Joseph before him and realized the wisdom that Joseph had and made him the second most powerful person on the planet why because he believed that he was going to rule over and that blessing took him from rags to riches 
And the end of the story is wonderful because his family was restored. He brought all of them into Egypt and they were starving. They were in a drought. They were in horrible. And he blessed the family. They were started multiplying like rabbits and growing and growing and they were blessed. And boy, this is Joseph's family. And you know the story. That went on for hundreds of years until what he prophesied would happen and that was in 430 years those people would possess the promised land all from the blessing I said it's all from the blessing say it with me I'm blessed I'm blessed coming and going and I preach the way I preach not to be different because the blessing won't work without faith if you don't know what God's will is, then you've got to search the scriptures till you find out what his will is. Faith won't work with doubt. I don't know what God's going to do. It only works. I remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, first chapter, he said this. He had told them at Macedonia that he was going to come visit them again. And for whatever reason, he had delayed in it. And all the people in church said, well, maybe what he said in the gospel isn't Maybe it's sometimes yes, sometimes no. And I just hear Paul going, no, I don't want him to think that God doesn't want to save everybody. I don't want him to think that God doesn't want to heal everybody. I don't want him to think that God doesn't want to restore everybody. And that's where that famous verse that all the promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Isn't that like a roulette wheel? It's yes Yes, God wants to bring you out of the mess that you're in. And always remember this about this. Promises are conditional. They, they, they call them conditional promises, which means they're conditioned on faith. And then people say, yeah, but pastor, there is unconditional promises. That is absolutely true, but you'll never benefit from those unconditional promises without faith. Here's an unconditional promise. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? But the only ones that are going to benefit from that are those that have believed on Christ. Nobody else is going to benefit from it. In fact, if Jesus comes back and you haven't been saved yet, you can't get saved. It's too late for you. So you have unconditional promises like the great right throne judgment. God's going to judge the dead. That's happening. It's happening. You better make sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life. That takes faith. So I like to look at it this way. All the promises are conditional. If you want the benefits of it, you've got to believe that you receive what the blessing says you can have. If you believe that, you will begin to bring it into your life. But pastor, I, you know, I believe you can walk in faith and maybe not receive it in this life. The only time that is true is when God tells you ahead of time that this will not be in your generation. It's like when God told Abraham, when you look at the promised land, I'm giving all this to you he didn't receive that but then God explained to him this land is not going to come into, into your descendants inheritance for 430 years Abram knew because God told him that that he wouldn't be able to enjoy it but his descendants would and there's some verses that seem to imply that these blessings you might not get them in this life only when God tells you that not before Look at this final verse. Look at this. This is in Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Uh, so, somebody's lost. Maybe I didn't give it to him. Hebrews 11, 39. Put it up on the screen. There we go. All these, talking about the patriarchs, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. And somebody can see they didn't all get healed. They didn't all prosper. They didn't all do that. The promise is Christ. That's what he's referring to, Christ. They didn't receive Christ because he had to go to the cross, had to be raised from the dead. 
Then it goes on and says, it's, they're not complete until we're complete. And Jesus died for the sins of the world and raised up. One that, so now, every one of the blessings are available. Listen to me, I don't need healing when I get to heaven. My spirit man won't be sick. My body won't even be there. I need healing right here. I don't need provision in heaven. There's no poverty. There's no lack. There's no giants. There's no demons. I need it right here. I want you to expect tonight. Say it with me. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to expect to receive what I believe for. Say it with me. I'm going to expect to receive what I believe for. Whoo, glory to God. Can we shout on the Lord right now or something? I am so worked up about this. Man. Whew. I don't know why, why some preachers don't get excited. It's probably because they don't preach the promises. You preach the promises, you get excited. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you tonight. I'm asking, Lord, that you'd bless every person, Father. And that many of the things, Father, they struggled with, Father, tonight you've revealed to them. Maybe that, I got a blessing in this area. Uh, he, you gave me every blessing. I'm going to believe I receive right now that you'd help me with it, Lord. Lead them and guide them. And let there be a high expectation that you're going to move, that you're going to touch, that you're going to move in this way and that way and bless. Father, we thank you for it. And we give you praise. Now, with everyone praying... If you came here tonight and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you got to get Jesus. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. You won't step into the blessing without Christ. That means you got to say, I want Christ in my life. I want him to be the Lord of my life. I want him to prevail in my life. I want him to lead me, not my will, his will be done. If you've never made that decision, we'll pray for you tonight just lift your hand up to heaven and I'll pray for you Father thank you thank you Lord bless your people tonight Father pour out your goodness and grace and bless them in a supernatural way in Jesus name amen and amen have a great night we love you God bless you guys